The other night, Robert and I were driving to a restaurant, and somehow I missed my turn. You know, in the dark, everything that was familiar somehow no longer seemed familiar. It was difficult recognizing some of the simple landmarks, simple uh, directions and things that I normally took for granted that I saw within the fullness of day and became kind of confusing for me. Robert turned to me and said, what, don't you recognize the turn? You've been here so often. What's wrong? You don't, you don't recognize what, where you are? And really what a statement that is, because sometimes we don't take time in the darkness to recognize. Or we're facing challenges of truly really being able to recognize in the darkness of our lives. Today is the season of Advent, and we've lit the candles during this journey of four weeks. A candle of expectation, expecting something in this season to unfold. A candle of magnification, to magnify the Lord within our spirit, within our very soul. A candle of preparation, saying I'm getting ready for all these good, the goodness of God to unfold in my life in greater ways than ever before. And today we lit a candle of recognition, to pause, to take time out, to fully recognize and how important it is that we are part of this in the journey of our awakening during the season of Advent. For to recognize is to identify, to know, to be aware of something. Sometimes in life there are moments when things that are so familiar with us will be forgotten. We don't know how to become really aware. We forget that they're there. And we lose sight of them. So it's really important that we do this sort of time out of saying, let's take into account what is it we recognize in our spiritual lives. Because everything begins with recognition of what is. It starts with this awareness. We have a good friend from Baltimore comes to visit. He loves to cook. He always starts the day by pulling open the refrigerator door and saying, let's see what we've got to work with. Let's see what we've got. Sort of taking an inventory. A moment of recognition of all the available ingredients that he can turn to. This is the story of our life during this season. We take a moment out to recognize. What do we have to work with? And what are we working with? What's going on within our spiritual life that recalls out a moment of acknowledgement and recognition? For recognition then is the starting point of something great within our lives. We see this even embodied in the example of the song we just sung, the Lord's Prayer. That prayer giving us insight, giving us instruction and guidance is to say, here's an example when you pray, here's a guideline. doesn't mean that you have to pray this prayer. But that the components that you see within this prayer are there that would lead you and guide you into the powerful expression of a greater communion with God. And it begins with recognition. Our Father, who art in heaven. That's not like, dear John, I'm addressing you. It's not that kind of thing, nor is it uh, something that's really calling out or addressing something outside as if we're calling out to something. It's an acknowledgement. It's a recognition that the divine source, the Father, which is seen in the ancient times as the source of all in family and life dynamics, the Father, the source, the divine source, it is found, it is discovered in heaven. And where is heaven? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. Our divine source, which we find within, is a moment of recognition and declaration of this is what I know to be true. I recognize this within my journey. I recognize that the divine source of all the goodness that I'm searching for in life, it begins and it's found deep within me. That divine source is not a place that's saying, uh, if our Father who art in heaven is somewhere up there. But our divine source, our Father, who are found deep within our hearts and our lives, going within the soul, going within the consciousness. Hallowed be thy name is a recognition. It's not herald be thy name, as some Sunday school teachers begin to think, uh, touching their kids. It's not herald. It's not a name. It's not hallowed. His name is not hallowed. It's not hallowed the name, it's holy be your name. And that name meaning your character. For your character is found in your name, and your name describes truly your character. For when we say Holly, we think of Holly and who she is and how wonderful she is. When we say the name Charles, we think of Charles and 
Oh, the character of Charles. We think of Paula. We hear the name and we think of the character of Paula. You see, for the name reflects who that person is and that character. So what we're saying is a recognition of the divine source within. Holy is its character. Divine is its character. Sacred is its character. For the that which wants to unfold with, from within our lives is beautiful, perfect, holy, and good. And then we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in the physical as it is within the spiritual, on earth as it is in heaven, unfolding in a beautiful way within our lives. For this is then this invitation for us to call heaven to uh, be in this moment. Not that we're going to heaven, but that we're bringing heaven into this moment. That's the whole journey of our life. We think and focus so much, oh, I can't wait. One day I'll be in heaven. We have the opportunity to bring heaven here and now. For that's the prayer that Jesus prayed. As on earth, as in heaven, as on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. This wonderful exchange of saying, bring it into sense of oneness. This is the power of recognition within our lives that's seen forth in this beautiful example in a prayer, calling us to recognize, acknowledge all these wonderful things. For our recognition is simply this statement, this I know. That's really what it is. In fact, quite often we're looking for a way to offer affirming prayer. And how do we begin affirming prayer? Because we're not addressing as something outside of our lives, but we're proclaiming and acknowledging and recognizing what is. So we may say, this I know to be my truth. What a beautiful beginning that is. It's the recognition that's been embodied or given in the example of the Lord's Prayer. This I know to be true. Our Father who art in heaven, uh, that the divine source is deep within me and holy is its character. It's a recognition statement. And how important it is that we begin to say, this is what I know. Taking inventory of this is what I know to be true. And too often we go through life without really jotting down, taking note, or doing an inventory of what things do I really know? What do I really believe? What do I know is a foundation of my spiritual life? What do I really recognize? For in my greatest moments of trial and tribulation in my own personal life, I had to stop and say, wait a minute. Here I'm stressed. I'm worried. I'm, I'm caught up in all this negative energy and all this fear that's going on. And I have to stop and say, wait a minute. What do I know? Well, I know that God will never leave me nor forsake me and that God is with me in this moment. What do I know? Well, I know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Okay, well, what else do I know? And when I begin to unfold and acknowledge the listing of all the things that we so often say in cliched phrases and we throw off flippantly without really thinking about it, is this something we really know that we embody? Because that's what recognition is. Take time to say, this is what I know. Because in the darkness of our lives, sometimes we have to acknowledge the power, the presence, the wisdom, of the divine. And there we find strength. And Sears texted me this week and she said, I need a promise. I'm, I need a promise. I need, I need something. Give me a passage, a promise that can help sustain me or lift me and encourage me. I sent her three. Uh, I said, here you go. There's lots of promises that we can look to, that we can turn to. Promises, give me a passage that helps me recognize, that helps me acknowledge that God is with me. The beautiful text today from Genesis 28, 15 starts out with, behold. What is to behold? Recognize. Pause. Start for a moment. Recognize this because this is so, so important for our lives as it's inviting a beautiful promise, a beautiful truth for our lives. It says, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. Recognize that. Behold, wow, God is keeping us. God is with us, never leaving nor forsaking us. God is present in the moment wherever you go. Wherever you were Saturday night, mm -hmm, God was with you. Wherever you are tomorrow morning, God is with you. When you go to work, God is with you. When you're out on 85, God is with you. When you're uh, at home in bed asleep, God is with you. That's this wonderful acknowledgement that God will never leave us nor forsake us and will keep us, keep us. 
protect us, be with us wherever we may go. It's to begin with a recognition of that powerful presence, to recognize the presence of God in our lives. How beautiful that passage is. And then it begins to unfold even more when it says, and I will bring you back to this land. And this was for Jacob, a promise to say, that which you are looking forward to, I will bring you back. I will restore. I will bring everything back to you in the very power of the divine at work within our lives. We have to pause and say, wait a minute, I recognize there's a divine ability, ability, ability to bring us to our highest and best, ability to unfold so many beautiful blessings and prosperity within our journey of our lives. We realize, wow, I have to acknowledge the presence. I have to acknowledge the power. And I have to acknowledge the infant wisdom of God. For the scripture says, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. The infinite wisdom of God says, I already know all things. I know what you desire before you even ask. And I've already promised this to you. And I will be with you until the fulfillment of that very promise. How beautiful that promise is of our lives, of eternal life. That promise is of infinite blessing. That promise is of abundance. That promise is of great infinite love. That promise is of wonderful inclusive, uh, unforgiving spirit of the divine at work within our lives. You see so much more that we need to stop and say, wait a minute, this I know, this I recognize, this I acknowledge. I acknowledge the presence, the power, and the infinite wisdom at all times within my life. You see, when we begin this type of acknowledgement, we are making ourselves aware of something. You know, in times of stress, you want to forget everything, don't you? You think, you, do we like, like, feel like we sometimes go stupid when we're stressed, you know? We're so stressed, you know, something goes wrong with the computer, we can't even find the on and off switch anymore. Something goes wrong in life and we can't even figure out how to turn the oven on or turn it off. You know, we sometimes get so stressed in life that we can't remember how to stop the car and where to put the brakes on. You know, all these kind of things, life goes on and we get stressed and full of weary that it begins to block out and obliterate the things that we thought we knew and we took for granted within our law. So that's why the importance of a moment of recognition is crucial for our spiritual lives. As we prepare for the unfolding of God's goodness in a special way within our life, a birth of something new in this Christmas season within us, that we too birth this wonderful love and light in a fresh new way, it begins with a sort of acknowledgement within us. You see, quite often we may pray the, pray the prayer of protection very popular within the unity communities, that prayer of protection says, the light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The, the power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me, and wherever I am, God is. It's not a prayer for protection. It's a prayer of protection, because it's a prayer that acknowledges. Quite often we may go to say, wait a minute, I need God to protect me in this time of stress. I need God to watch out for me. I need God to look out for me. And I'm looking for this kind of uh, feeling that says, God, I need you. And wait a minute. God says, well, I've always been there. I've never left you nor forsaken you. How do you say in this moment suddenly you're feeling like I need you, like I've missed out and I've lost it? Not God who's left you. So it's not a prayer for protection but it's acknowledgement of the protection that's always been there. That wherever I am, God is. That this presence watches over me. That the power of God is always protecting me. When we realize that this is what is happening every single moment of the journey of our life. That's that passage from Genesis. That's this prayer unfolding for us. And it is this wonderful realization that says, Ah, so this is it. This is the great ahas that we need to have in our life. How many of you go to these moments where a conference or a workshop or something, and you have this great aha, a great understanding, a great revelation. Something comes to you, they go, I get it now. I get it. This wonderful aha. aha. The light goes on within our lives. Recognition enables us to have these spiritual ahas that take us to this place where we go, I understand how God is at work within me now. You see, everything is birthed out of spiritual recognition. 
And in this Christmas time, we read the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 2. It says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the time of the King Herod. What does Judea mean for us? Because all of Scripture is full of beautiful symbolism, metaphor, lessons for us to see something deeper in the story, to understand the story behind the story. For the word Judea simply means for us spiritual recognition. The Christ was born in Judea. The Christ is born in spiritual recognition. And what city? What city is found in Judea where he was born? But he was born in Bethlehem. What does Bethlehem mean? It means house of bread. It means that place of new understanding. For bread all through the ancient times was a wonderful symbol of that which nurtures and strengthens us. You know the story of the children of Israel out in the wilderness looking for bread and manna, the bread of heaven, came down upon them and they were able to go out and scoop up this nurturing substance, that which nourished them. But yet it was fresh manna that was required every day. For those who try to scoop up manna for days ahead and put it in their wonderful spiritual Tupperware and take it home and say, oh, great, I've got enough manna for the next week. I don't need to go out and collect new manna. It's spoiled. You see the beautiful lessons and metaphor there ever unfolding for us that there is give us this day our daily bread. It's not give us this day our daily loaf of rye. It's not give us this day our daily loaf of wonder bread. It's give us this day our new understanding. For the Christ was born in Bethlehem, the house, the place of bread, of new understanding, of new truth. What do we find that these beautiful symbols are trying to speak to us, that the authors are writing and painting this picture for us, that everything that's birthed is going to be found in a place of spiritual recognition a place of new understanding, that Bethlehem within our hearts and our lives, that Judea that is this place to where we recognize all the good within our hearts and our lives. When we come to this place, we find that there's a wonderful birthing that takes place. For the story of Christmas is not just history, and the birth of a baby in a manger. It's the story of our spiritual lives. And where will something be birthed? In you, it will be birthed in the place of spiritual recognition. So stop and recognize. Wait a minute. For anything to be birthed, I've got to stop right here and now and say, this is what I know. This is what I believe. This is what I acknowledge. This is what I recognize. This is what I see all around me in the spirit and presence of God at work within my life. This is what I claim in scriptures for my day-to-day -day journey. And when I'm there, I'm in my Judea. I'm in my spiritual recognition. And when I am there, I am this open place called Bethlehem where new understanding comes to me each and every day. And it's the bread of heaven that feeds us till we want no more, as that phrase says. So it is that we have come to this place of spiritual well, well, awareness within our birth, with, within our life, that we can birth new understanding. For Advent is the time that we ask this question, where's the light? When we began this journey, we asked that question, as Advent is a season where the days grow shorter and the nights grow longer, and preparation was a time uh, where we began to ask, where's the lamps? Where's the lights? Let's get them ready. Do you remember we talked about this? And we're asking as we get the light ready, we're asking, where's the light? Where will the light be? Where will the light shine? Where will it happen? Ah, it happens in spiritual recognition. It happens or bread of new understanding unfolds within us. It happens within our lives. How important it is that we take time to realize this is a season of recognition. This is a moment to recognize all the good that God has for us. And then we're ready to birth something within our lives this Christmas season that's new, that's fresh. It brings new meaning to the season as never before. New light, new revelations, new hope, new promise. 
We just celebrated the winter solstice happening. As the season now begins to change, as of today, the days begin to get longer. Can you feel the shift? Can you feel the change? So it is that we celebrate this season, this winter solstice. It is so appropriate that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Put at this time, because Jesus was not a December baby. I hate to tell you that. I know all you wonderful Sagittarians and all you beautiful December babies think Jesus shares this month with you. Truly, we know that it was more of a springtime birth for Jesus. But we celebrate it. We moved it to this time of darkness and birth of light that we might symbolically understand more and more what's going on in our spiritual lives. And as we go through the darkness of journey where growth seems to slow down, we prepare for a new awakening where the sun begins to shine even brighter and brighter, new possibilities, and a new year, a new hope, a new promise unfolds for our lives. That's the birth of Christ in us, the birth of a new consciousness, a new awareness that's fresh. And so we celebrated year after year. We celebrated each Christmas. We celebrated each uh, season of Advent and Christmas tide. We come together with this wonderful moment that says we are fully then acknowledging, recognizing that in darkness there's a transition to great light. And that's what we call forward in our own life. Today is the moment of recognition. Amen.